All right. So again, my apologies for getting behind, but I'm trying to catch us back up. Um, actually, a lot of what I'm about to say is really things we've done before, um, but I need to put it all together. So here it is. Um, so basically, the thing I'm going to talk about here in this little video is how to solve Laplace's equation with complex variables. So Laplace's equation is Vxx plus Vyy equal to zero. All right. In other words, any harmonic function solves Laplace's equation. That's essentially a tautology. Um, we also know that if we have a holomorphic function on a domain, that means f prime of z is partial f partial x, but it's also minus i partial f partial y. So if you look at it, f f fxx plus fyy is actually just exactly equal to minus fyy plus fyy, which is of course zero. So any complex differentiable function solves the complex version of Laplace's equation. And that means that both the component functions u and v are separately harmonic. All right. And we also had a theorem that if we had a harmonic function that was real valued on an open rectangular disk, then in fact there exists a, a, a harmonic conjugate v such that u plus iv is holomorphic. All right. So we, those are some things we've already gone through. All right. Now, what are the applications of Laplace's equation? Well, three major ones that we tend to talk about in the standard course. Fluid physics, um, in that case, if you have phi plus i uh, psi, um, psi I believe is the stream function and uh, phi is called the potential. Um, I have a couple pages in the notes devoted to unwrapping what that all looks like. That doesn't really matter to us too much this semester, but I would encourage you to read, read those notes. Um, I don't think I've assigned really any problem, which gets into the, uh, the nuts and bolts of the fluid physics thing here. All right. So if you don't want to worry about it, you don't have to. Um, the heat equation. Well, the heat equation is states that the derivative with respect to time is proportional to uxx plus uyy. This is the how the temperature is distributed in a two-dimensional region, how heat flows, right? And if we look at the solutions which are steady state, right? Um, in other words, where ut is equal to zero, well, then we're back to a Laplace's equation, all right? So solving Laplace's equation is, is finding a, a steady state temperature distribution, um, all right? That's one thing you could think about. Another thing you could think about is the electrostatics problem. Electric field is equal to minus the differential of the voltage function. That means that the voltage function is harmonic. All right. Okay, so these are some physical applications that Laplace's equation comes up. Of course, Laplace's equation is one of the most famous and important problems in mathematical physics. It has a long and rich history, which I'm not doing justice to at the moment. So Basically, what we're interested in solving is boundary value problems. We want to solve the Laplace equation on a region S where particular values are given for the function we're looking for, the solution we're looking for on the boundary of S. All right. Now, if the boundary falls into a nice enough shape, so we have template solutions of Laplace's equation, which allow us to fit the boundary values by choosing appropriate parameters. I'll give a list of these coming up next, okay? However, if the region we're looking at is a bit more complicated, all right, um, if, the, if the region we're looking at is a bit more complicated, but if it allows us to map that region to one of those nice template regions, well, then we can, we can use the following trick. We take the complicated region, we map it to a simpler region, we, we find our, one of our template solutions over here, all right, we set up the boundaries, maybe psi equals to one on this piece, psi equals to eight on that piece, and then we map it back over to here to give phi equals to one on the more complicated region, and phi equals to eight on the edge of the other side of the complicated region, right? What's the formula for phi over here? Phi of z is equal to psi of f of z. This will solve the Laplace equation over here and it will give us the boundary conditions eight and one in my picture. All right, this idea of 
taking a complicated region, mapping it to a simpler region, solving Laplace's equation over here, and then using this pullback here to solve it in the domain. This technique altogether is called the conformal mapping technique. All right? So first of all, first, first order business, I'm going to show you some template solutions. And then we'll, we'll finish with some actual examples of conformal mapping. So the first, really just three template solutions. And these should be most of what you need to solve your homework, by the way, guys. Um, so first of all, annular region. If you want to solve Laplace's equation on an annular region, the region between two circles, say R1 less than modulus of Z minus Z0 less than R2. So here the center of the annulus is Z0. Well, then you can just use phi of z equals to a times natural log of z minus c naught modulus plus b. Choose a and b appropriately to make it happen. If you wanted to write this in w, as sometimes we will in the application, well, psi of w is the same thing with the w's replacing the z's. I point this out just because I don't want you to be confused that you have to use this. In the later problem, you might need to adapt this formula with w's instead, all right? So um, here's an example of that. To solve Laplace's equation for the annulus going from 1 to 2, and suppose I want 10 on the inner and 30 on the outer circle. So here's my template. I plug in 10 equals to a natural log of 1 plus b. 30 equals to a natural log of 2 plus 10. Natural log of 1 is 0. So this gives me b equals to 10. <clears throat> and then this solves for um, a equals to 20 over natural log of 2. So there you go. That's our, our, our Laplace equation. V of z is 20 log of z minus 1 modulus of z minus 1 over log 2 plus 10. This right here solves Laplace's equation on this, you know, this shape right here where you've got inner radius 1 and outer radius 2. And, you know, of course we could we could, um, you know, what is that in terms of x and y? Well, that's, you know, 20, I guess I could do 10 over the natural log of 2 times the natural log of, you know, x minus 1 squared plus y squared plus 10. That's the actual function. So the, the, there, there would be a square root of that but I brought that one half power out front and canceled the 20 to make it a 10. So there's the straight up real formula for this one. All right. Ooh, my table is so bumpy. All right, so that's one. Next trial solution. So anytime you have an annulus, you can use this technique to fit it. Um, by the way, all of these things are from Saf and Snyder's book, which is excellent on this topic. Just excellent. So next up, if we wanted to solve um, Laplace's equation on a sector or a wedge, so like theta 1 less than theta 2 for some you know, region, we can use phi of z is equal to a arg z minus z naught plus b, where here I mean for you to choose the appropriate branch of the argument so that you've got a nice continuous swing of the angles in the sector. So for this one, we're going from 3 pi over 4 to 5 pi over 4, right? You wouldn't want to use the, the principal argument here because you've got that discontinuity at the negative um, real axis with respect to this point, you know? So we'll use arg naught if it's, you know, or argo if you like. And so we have phi of z is a arg naught z minus 3 plus minus i plus b. All right. And then I fit the boundary conditions into my template. 20 is equal to that for the 3 pi over 4. 30 is equal to a times the 5 pi over 4 down here, plus b. I do the math. Um, this gives me, you know, a is 20 over pi, and b is equal to 5. And so there you go. That's the solution right there in terms of z notation. But in terms of real notation, we got to do some trigonometry here. See, because over here, the inverse tangent doesn't work, right? So i got to do pi plus the inverse tangent to get the angle that I want between, you know, 3 pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4, like that. And um, 
So this here, z minus 3 minus i is x minus 3 plus i times y minus 1. Remember the inverse tangent is the imaginary over the real part, and there it is. So there you go, that would be a solution to Laplace's equation on that, that sector. So if you, you can do this technique for, also for like a half plane, right? Um, like the, it could be that the sector is, you know, like they're straight. We'll, we'll do one of those later. But. All right, next up. Um, well, next up a remark. Why are the two things we just looked at holomorphic? Well, it's because the log, right? The log based on a, a, a angle cut of alpha is holomorphic. And it's got log z plus i arg alpha, right? That's holomorphic in the slit complex plane where you're just removing the ray at angle alpha, right? So log z and arg alpha z are harmonic on that slit complex plane, but in fact the log of the modulus is, is harmonic on everything. And, and of course if we shift this to z minus z naught, it doesn't change the story. So that's why, and if we multiply by a number, it doesn't change it from being harmonic, and if we add a number, it doesn't change it from being harmonic. Right, so this is in fact harmonic on the complex plane, except for z naught, of course. And this is harmonic on the slit complex plane. Um, centered it with this with a slit centered at z naught. I should really for this I would have to m move that r that ray to to be starting at z naught, right? But anyway, um, case two requires care because we have to find if we're going to find a real formula in terms of inner tangent, you know we got to be careful. That's that whole problem of finding a standard angle. It's a pain. You got to deal with it. <clears throat> we'll deal with it in some examples. All right, so three slab or strip. So if you have something like your region is defined by c1 less than or equal to ax plus by less than or equal to c2, where you want phi equal to phi1 for c1 equal to that, phi equal to phi2 for c2 equal to that, right? Then you can use this pattern phi of x plus iy is m times ax plus by plus n. This will do the trick. Here's an example. By the way, this is clearly harmonic because if you twice differentiate it, it's zero with respect to x or y. Okay, so here's, here's how that goes. Um, if I'm looking at these parallel lines, which is what you need for a slab, 1 less than or equal to y minus x less than or equal to 2, so I use my template, phi of x plus iy is m times y minus x plus n, and um, so this gives me 4 is equal to m plus n, that, that's the y minus x equal to one boundary condition, the green one. And then I want it three equal to, you know, m times y minus x be equal to two, so two m plus n. And um, subtract these equations, I get one equals minus m. And um, that gives me m equals to minus one, and then I, find n is equal to 5, and so there you go. That's my Laplace equation. It's the Laplace solution. Uh, solution of Laplace's equation, x minus y plus 5. This solves Laplace's equation on the strip, and it gives you the boundary values that we wanted. Right? When x minus y is equal to 1, this gives you 4. Um, excuse me, when y minus x is equal to 1, this gives you minus 1. Minus 1 plus 5 is 4. When y minus x is equal to 2, that gives you minus 2 plus 5, which gives you 3 here, just like we want. And of course, more, you know, often you want a vertical or a horizontal strip. This, this technique still works just fine. So we do um, mx plus n in this case. And I wanted pi over here, and I wanted 7 over here, just to make things funky. So. Um, when I plug in x equal to 3, I get pi is 3m plus n. When I plug in x equal to 6, I get 7. That's my desired fit. 7 is 6m plus n. Solve these equations, and out pops this template solution. This solves Laplace's equation on this vertical strip and gives me the desired boundary conditions of pi and 7 at 3 and 6, respective. So these three templates will solve, I think, everything in your homework. Um, or close to it. Anyway, they'll help. Now here's another example. Um, what if we want to find um, 
a solution to Laplace's equation on this half plane with pi up here and zero down there. So here's the origin in the middle, okay? And um, so it's really a sector problem and we can use the principal argument on this one. And um, so a little bit of algebra shows me I will choose a equal to um, one and b equal to pi over two. And so lo and behold, Laplace's equation is solved by pi over two plus argz, which in this case, I can just use the inverse tangent because we're in the right, we're in quadrants one and four where inverse tangent makes sense. So the solution to Laplace's equation is just pi over two plus inverse tangent of y over x, which is, you know, not too bad. Now, I solved this problem a really different way before I did this. And I found, um, oh, there's no h there, that you could also write it as, x, the, the solution is inverse cotangent of minus y over x. Um, but I have to warn you <laughs> about this. Well, I found something disturbing, actually, which is that there are two competing definitions for inverse cotangent. And um, the one I've used in this example is actually non-standard. Well, I'm not sure if it's non-standard. It's just there's a, comp there's a competitor that's been around since Euler, um, which I don't really want to talk about. I just should mention that if you look up inverse cotangent, you, might, you won't find what I wrote here without some looking. Um, anyway, so what I did, the, the first way I solved this was to take this vertical half plane and map it over to this half, map it over to here, where then I decided to use, you know, psi of w is r w, right? So that means phi of z is r i z. That's the conformal mapping idea. I take w, I replace it with i z. That is going to give me a mapping for that. See, because the red part maps to the red part and the green part maps to the green part, right? For example, like i is here, right? What happens when you do i times i? i times i is minus one, right? That maps to minus one. And if you put, if you, if you map minus i, minus i maps to one, because minus i squared is, is one. Um, so then <clears throat> that would give me r guy z. And somewhere I was reading it said you could use inverse cotangent as a formula here. And I was like, that makes, that's, that's pretty neat that you could do that. Um, but that assumes you're using my understanding of inverse cotangent, which is inverse. So if cotangent looks like this, right? So the inverse of cotangent with restrict, restricted to zero to pi would be this green graph, all right? And so theta being inverse cotangent, it would be inverse cotangent of x over y for y positive, just like theta is inverse tangent of y over x for x positive. So I thought that was pretty cool. And um, if I apply that to this problem, see u over v is iz, which is actually minus y plus ix. So that's why I get phi is equal to inverse cotangent of minus y over x as my other solution to this problem for um, other solution of Laplace's equation. And I think this still makes sense. Um, but I'm just warning you that not everyone would agree with me about this. Okay, let me move on. I don't want to make this the inverse cotangent show. Um, it's just bothering me. I just found out about this. Okay, so um, here's another example. This one is a little bit general, more general template. So suppose you want to set it up so that you've got boundary one, boundary two, boundary three, boundary four, and you're solving the problem on the upper half plane. But it's the upper half plane with these kind of four different cases. Well, in this case, you can use a template that's like this. Every place you got discontinuity, you add a new argument. So like a1 arg of z plus one comes from the minus one, a2 arg of z for the zero, a3 arg of z minus one for the one, and then plus b, all right? And then to figure out this one, two, three, four parameters, you plug in a point, or you consider points from the one, two, three, four different cases. So first of all, for the purple case, x greater than one, that's where these arguments are all zero. 
See, because we're to the right of the place where the angle is defined. And we're on the positive axis, right? So angle zero. So we get v of z is just b. We want it to be one there, so that makes b equal to one. Then in the green region, we've got arg of z minus one equal to pi, but the arg of z and the arg of z plus one are still zero. So <clears throat> in the green, we get um, pi a3 plus b equal to two, so we get a3 is um, one over pi. And then when we look at the red region, at that point, we've got um, arg of z minus one and arg of z both pi, um, but still the arg of z plus one is still zero. So um, here we have a2 times pi plus one over pi times pi, one over pi from the previous step, plus one. So it turns out a2 is also one over pi. And then finally, when you're over here, all of the arguments are pi because you're to the left of all of them where they're centered. And so you get a1 pi plus a2 pi plus a3 pi plus one equal to four. And as it happens, a1 is one over pi. So there it is. This is Laplace's equation. This is a solution to Laplace's equation in the upper half plane such that you get boundary values one, two, three, and four as, as shown there. To me, that is pretty neat that you can do that that's, that easily. Like, I don't know, that, that first time I saw this, I was just like, what? It can't be that easy, but it is. No, there are harder things, don't get me wrong. So here's a play on that. I, um, I thought, okay, well, I wanna do something that's kind of more interesting with that. And um, so I was trying to map this circle um, to, a, to a line, and I did. Because if you have an, a circle that goes to the origin, remember we learned um, Mobius transformations, fractional linear transformations, map circles through the origins to lines. So if I can figure out where um, some points on the circle map to, in this case, f of 2 goes to 1 plus i, f of 1 plus i goes to 2 plus i, and f of 1 minus i goes to i, well, that tells me, right, that tells me that this maps to y equals to i, actually. All right, so that's not quite what I wanted. All right, so example three is kind of like, okay, that's, that's kind of neat. This is a neat mapping, but it's not quite what I want. Because I wanted to map this circle to the, um, just to the coordinate axis, just to make it, you know, clean and pretty for an example. So that's what example four is. I took my mapping of two over... I took my 2 over uh, z, 2i over z map, and I just subtracted i from it. See, if I subtract i from this, it'll just bring it down 1. And so that's what happens down here. So I do f of z. Um, oh, and I got rid of the plus 1. I didn't do plus 1 because plus, the plus 1, not adding 1, just shifts these three points over left rather than moving them over 1. It shifts them left 1. Anyway, the calculations are down here anyway. And by the way, when I get back to school, I will, you know, scan this and stuff for you, hopefully Monday. Um, so um, I said f of z is 2i over z minus i. Um, this is going to map this circle of radius 1 centered at 1 to this, you know, to the u-coordinate axis over in the w-plane. Um, right? So like uh, f of 1 minus i maps to minus 1, f of 2 maps to 0, f of 1 plus i maps to 1, just like I wanted, which means I've done some color coding here. The purple part of the circle maps to the purple part of the line. The green part of the circle, circle maps to the green part of the line. The red maps to the red, and the brown maps to the brown. Um, and so I, I decided I wanted to solve Laplace's equation on this disk. Um, such that I had boundaries 1, 2, 3, and 4 on these quarter circles. And I can achieve that by just using conformal mapping because I know the template solution over here from example 2. And so I know that I can do 1 over pi arg w plus 1 plus 1 over pi arg w plus 1 over pi arg w minus 1 plus 1. That will give me 4, 3, 2, 1 as boundary values here. And then all I have to do is replace w with w equals to f of z 
and that will solve Laplace's equation on the disk with those boundary values. And so the solution to Laplace's equation on this disk with those boundary values, let's get it down here. So I've just, all I've done is taken the one over, the, this is w plus one, this is w, this is w minus one, and that's plus one. So it's that, there it is, that's, that's how you do it. Now, let's see here. So here's the parts of the notes I was saying you can kind of, I, you know, if you're interested in the fluid physics, you can read through it. Um, I got a lot of details in here that I, I'm not exactly covering this time. There is one example in the notes which is worth um, stealing, so I will. So this, um, find the steady state heat distribution for a circular plate of radius 1, which the upper edge is held at constant temperature. And I changed the example to u equals minus 1, and the lower edge is held at con temp temperature u equal to 1. Because if I make those modifications, the example works. <laughs> so let's see here. Solution. So here I'm just rattling through the usual physical assumptions. No heat sources within the disk. The flow of heat is rotational. So we're seeking a harmonic function on the disk, which fits the prescribed boundary conditions. And we're going to make a creative leap because it reminds us of the upper half plane and the behavior of ARG. Um, and we had, a, we had an example, that the Cayley map. H of z, z minus i over z plus i mapped from the um, uh, well this mapped the half plane to the the, the disk is what it did um, so anyway long story short um, we're, we're mapping this upper half plane right um, Come on, we're mapping this upper half plane to the disk um, by h of z, uh, z minus i over z plus i. Um, let's see here. So I think I actually need it the other way around. Well, anyway, let me, let me, this, I, I don't want to get too wrapped up on this. The point is, if you read this carefully, you can, this is another example, although I don't know if the, I'm not sure if the, the method is as clear in my notes here as it is in the things I've written out by hand today. So let me just get to the other example I have for you. Um, well, I mean, fine. Here's the, come on, where did the formula go? Sorry, guys. Oh. I was going to tell you the um, if I make the modification I did at the start of that this 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 error is no longer it fixes this error. But, all right, sorry. Let me let me focus here. So this is example one. Finally, one more example, and that'll be it for you for uh, for this video. Um, this is example one from page four twenty of Sapp and Snyder's uh, you know comp fundamentals of complex analysis third edition. And so here they're trying to solve Laplace's equation on this lens region where they want boundary value 0 on the upper part and boundary value 1 in the lower part. And this lens is formed from the intersection of this circle centered at i and um, this circle centered at 1. They're both radius 1. And um, the, the genius here is to realize well, these are both circles through the origin, so we can use a fractional linear transformation to map these to a, to a sector. Um, and I will, you know, like, this is not the kind of, um, I don't think we've done nearly enough examples for you guys to have that kind of intuition. There's like a full 30 pages in Saff and Snyder's book just on techniques for coming up with these kinds of maps, all right? So like, I have not given you the tool set to properly come up with this example, but I'm going to show it to you, okay? I'm just saying that this formula that I'm writing down, it's a bit mystical from, from our perspective, although not entirely unreasonable. Um, see, because again, a fractional linear transformation will map a, a circle through the origin to a line, right? And um, so then, this particular one um, 
it's based on that common point between the circles, 1 plus i, it sends both of those. It sends this point on both circles to infinity. All right, so 1 plus i makes the denominator 0 here. And so both 1 plus i and um, I guess I need to zoom out a bit. Sorry, guys. Um, here. So 1 plus i maps to infinity, 0 maps to 0. All right, and then here's where it gets interesting. 2, which is not a point we're interested in, except it's on the circle. So 2 maps to 1 plus i. And 2i, which again, it's not a point in the region we're interested in, but 2i maps to 1 minus i. So that shows you that you can figure out what circle maps to which circle. So this, this red piece maps to this red piece, and this brown arc maps to that part of the line. The green maps to the green, and the purple maps to that purple. And I'm figuring that out because I know two points on the line. I know that 0 maps to 0, and I know that it maps to 1 plus i, and the other one maps to 1 minus i. Then I can connect the dots and get the rest of the line. All right, and then, you know, you can think about the left, um, you know, orienting the boundary and following the orientation, and that will tell you that this maps to that, all right, keeping things on the left, because this is a conformal map. All right, and so then we go back to what I talked about earlier in this lecture, which is that we can construct a solution on the sector, right? We can a solution on the sector by using the sector template, a r w plus b. So we've got zero is five pi over four plus b, and one is three pi over four plus b. This you can solve to get a equals minus two over pi and b equals to five halves. So our template solution is psi of w is minus 2 over pi r w plus 5 halves, where w is equal to u plus i v, um, which is z over z minus 1 plus i. You work this out, it works out to x times x minus 1 times plus y times y minus 1 plus i times x minus y, divided by x minus 1 squared plus y minus 1 squared. This is in quadrants 2 and 3 in the w plane, which means, annoyingly, we're going to have to shift the tangent to get the angle there that we want, right? But that's not too bad. Argo w is pi plus the inverse tangent of v over u, which, by the way, is this. And so the solution we're looking for is 2 over pi times 5 pi over 4. Don't be mystified by that. That's just a weird way of writing 5 halves. All right, that's 5 halves. So we have 5 halves minus 2, 2 over pi, arg w, like it says up there. And, um, but notice that argo is pi plus the inverse tangent of v over u, which then putting it all together, 5 pi minus pi is pi over 4, and you got inverse tangent of this bad boy. And there you go. That is the solution to Laplace's equation. Solution to Laplace's equation on this lens region. And I don't know. That, to me, is really, really neat. And here's some details proving that, in fact, we did it. <laughs> you know, um, here's the formula, and um, I'm just checking it. And, and, I, and I actually plugged in, here's the parameterization of the one circle. Um, all right, and I plugged it in. I got pi over 4 from the inverse tangent, which, which then, when you plug it back into the formula, up here, you get pi over 4 minus pi over 4, which is 0, like you're supposed to. And if you plug in um, i plus e to the i t, which parameterizes the other circle, then you get minus pi over 4 when you look through the details here. And that pops out phi equals to 1, like it's supposed to. So I checked. I went back. I parameterized the circles. I plugged them into our, our alleged solution. And I did reproduce the boundary values as advertised. So anyway. <clears throat> Listen, this is just the startup of a very long story. Um, like I said, there's 30 pages in Saf and Snyder, and I just wanted to get, I wanted to show you enough that you understand the big idea of this. Um, so just to reiterate, the big idea is, if I can find my way back to the original page, big idea is just that we, you know, take our region, map it to a less complicated region, use one of the template solutions to solve it over here, 
and then the solution then is just written v of z is template solution evaluated at w equal to f of z and and that's how you do it so anyway thanks guys have a good weekend what's left of it